Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Forgotten Gear Restorations. This is live. This is not a voiceover. I am decaffeinated. I'm rough. So pardon the blabbering. Jose, this is your PCB update. In the background, you have your printed circuit board with some fancy new caps on it. I'm waiting on one more potentiometer to come in. And then we're in business. And uh, for the rest of you goons out there who, who may want to know, the, the little guy in the foreground here is one of the bad ones I took off the board. We're going to talk about them. We're going to dissect them. Uh, we're going to just struggle with the reality that parts aren't really available anymore. And then I'll show you how to get around that kind of stuff. Bye. Jose, good morning. And the rest of you goons and mutants out there, I bid you a good morning as well. We are just about done with board prep. Um, I'm missing one pot. I actually found uh, one of the proper replacement pots in inventory. Um, and um, as is often the case with uh, older amps, parts become uh, placed onto the obsolescence list and you can no longer get them. So you rely on eBay or you rely on um, maybe some, some back stock over at uh, your, your distributor du jour. Um, so you make some phone calls and hope that they just had one in a dusty bin somewhere, but they don't. And I'm talking about the um, one meg audio pots with the bracket uh, PC mount 60 millimeter with a split neural shaft. It doesn't always work out that way. Um, but thankfully, um, the parts are similar enough that you can uh, cross select them like for example let me get a pointer and I don't know if you can see this so let me just kind of get in there and I'll just explain you what I did um, so look at this guy the guy in the middle of the shot right here um, this guy right here um, you'll see the pot body and then you'll see that that pot body uh, without the bracket is the same as this pot body with the bracket. These are both CTS pots. What's the difference? Well, this one has a snap-in bracket. And this one didn't. So I disassembled one of the pots that came off of this board just to harvest the bracket. Um, the geometry works out perfectly. And I was able to reuse that bracket and with a little bit of solder it's fixed on there, very minimum deflection there. The geometry works out. So with a little bit of thought, you can get a beautiful repair done. Now I do need to go in there and scrub some flux. As you can see, I just finished that. Your cap job has been completed with the exception of the bias supply. And I upped the capacitance there and I'm still zoomed in a lot. Sorry about that. Where's your bias supply at, you ask? Well, it's right over here. These little guys, these three amigos down here. These guys right here. And uh, they've smaller value caps, but they decoupled. They decoupled them with some resistors. So you're going to get very low ripple off of those guys. And they're not stressed at all. I could leave these in. They tested great. But I'll change them out anyway. Uh, low voltage is looking great. Your screens, um, your screen and plate supply for the power tubes. These are the high quality Illinois caps and these guys are doing great. These big guys here, these guys here, and I'm having a heck of a time focusing this, this camera. So pardon me for the shoddy camera work the last couple days. Um, while I got this out, let me just show you something kind of cool. If, if you guys don't know how pots work or hell what they even look like on the inside, let me uh, let me whip this thing around and, uh, and and give you a little bit of learning. Is this the most sensual shot I've taken all week? Yes. Now this is the little um, conductive wafer, I call it that. Uh, and, and what it is, as you can see, there's a little semicircle of material there. That little black stuff is, is carbon. And a lot of you guys are uh, getting crazy, uh, changing all your resistors to metal film um, or, or carbon comp. And, and, and 
one or a carbon film rather and wondering why you can't get the hiss out well you still have the signal going through um, th this carbon strip here um, you'll notice that there's a center pin and then it's flanked by two outer pins the outer pins are connected to each side of that semicircular C um, what the manufacturer does is for any given rating they'll have you know whatever particular density of the resistive material say carbon uh, carbon composition stuff here or carbon film um, it, that's uh, comprising this bit and they'll say hey for every whatever measurement it's going to give you uh, this many ohms of resistance this one here is, is one meg one meg's worth of resistance along this thing here um, what you have um, what you have is a little element that will contact that oh, let me get something because my finger is going to throw this thing off and it's called the wiper and it's connected to let me get you in there whoop I'm sorry it's very difficult this is the wiper you see those little whiskers you see that these this little uh, bit there is connected to the shaft which is connected to the knob this is the part that protrudes out through the front panel of your amp remember how i was talking about that uh, center element good lord focus this center element is connected to the wiper so what happens when you turn the pot is um, these little whiskers that are riding along this track here um, you're creating a, a longer or shorter gap between the wiper and whatever terminal. And it's increasing or decreasing the length of this strip electronically, not physically. So as far as the electrons are concerned, wherever this is touching is, is creating its own little circuit with the, the wiper pin here and whatever side of the um, the carbon track here on either side of that split. I feel like I'm butchering this. So, so that's what happens. So um, with the meter, I can't capture this in the same shot, but I'll just narrate it for you. We're gonna pretend like the black lead is whatever uh, pin we're looking at and the red is the wiper so if i measure both sides i should get the stock value of the pot 916k in this instance not a perfect one meg so i'll do it like this actually let's say we're taking the resistance here uh, this is an open because there's no wiper there now let's pretend this is the wiper contacting the strip. Here I'm getting 2K. As I run this up, around here I'm getting 100K, 800K, and finally, actually from right here I'm getting 1 meg. Part of the problem with this pot was there's a bit of a disconnect between this terminal and the strip. You know, when you guys have dirty pots, you typically get some kind of environmental contamination between the wiper and this strip. So it's interrupting contact. Or you'll have a, a, a part of the strip that's sort of worn away. And then you'll have a break in contact. So you're turning up your volume and then there's a dead spot and all of a sudden it's loud again. Um, or you'll have a, one of the little whiskers on the wiper will break off and then the rest of them will drag it around and wear away this material. It starts feeling rough. Or say with a vintage amp, 
you'll have the wiper actually um, sort of chemically weld itself to the strip. And you'll have a frozen pot. Uh, that little greasy feel, that resistive feel that, that's so nice and tactile uh, comes from this part here. It's not on the strip itself between that and the wiper. It's actually on this pot shaft here where it interacts with the interior, I'm sorry, of this uh, threaded bushing. So you'll actually have grease loaded by the factory inside of here. And when you, uh, when you go nuts spraying out your pot, you, you can wash away. And then you'll get uh, almost no resistance to the feel of the pot, which is kind of annoying. But sometimes it's unavoidable. Um, ideally, your, your cleaning fluid will only end up settling on, uh, on, on this surface here, the wiper and the resistive track. So when you spray in there, um, it, it should wet these surfaces. And then by turning this, you're effectively scrubbing the track here and removing any oxidation from the wiper surface and the, the tr resistive track or element there. Pardon all the blabbering. This is what you get when I'm pre-caffeinated. And that's basically what happens. Um, if your pot is sealed and you're trying to clean it, you may think you're screwed, but you're not. Here's, here's kind of what it looks like, say from the factory. Let me, let me change this out, hang on. All right, this is not perfect, but I'm, I'm just trying to explain this to you. I was not planning on doing this at all. Um, there's a little CTS logo up there. You can't see it, it's embossed in the metal part of the bracket. Um, but focus on the small gap between that bushing or that collar, that threaded collar and the shaft. With the amp in a position um, that's safely placing these skyward, you can actually dribble, and I say dribble, not drench, you could dribble some cleaning fluid onto the shaft, let it shimmy down. And if you have a pot like this, and you pray you do, and you probably do, that has this little notch there that you're looking at um, pointing uh, eastward. You see that little V, I can't even focus, good Lord. You see that little uh, carve out, that little bit right here? The fluid should go down there and dribble past this point and then coat the surface of the aforementioned strip there, that little resistive strip. And then you start turning the pot and hopefully it's cleaning the thing. So that's all I know about that. How do you even close this out? Have a good one.